Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will mainly discuss about the construction of hydrophobicity profiles and the applications. Earlier, we discussed on different types of applications of these amino acid sequences. So, what are the various parameters or features or properties we discussed in the previous class? So, minus composition. Amino acid occurrence, uh, amino acid composition, molecular, molecular weight, weight, pair preference and so on. So, what is amino acid occurrence? So, number of times. It is essentially number of times each amino acid right, occurs in a protein sequence. Then composition normalized, normalized with the chain length. So, the difference between amino acid occurrence and composition is normalization with the number of residues in a sequence. Then we discussed about molecular weight. So, we can calculate the molecular weight by substituting appropriate weight rich amino acid residues and subtracted with the water molecule right 18 into n minus 1 water molecules because we the form the peptide bond it is elimination of one water molecule. Then we discussed about the pair preference right how far a residues occur next to each other A with A, A with D and so on. Then we discussed about couple of applications. One major application we discussed is how to distinguish between different types of proteins. Your proteins have different functions they have different structures. So, whether it is possible to distinguish between these two types of proteins based on the amino acid sequence information. So, we discuss based on the parameter or based on the property amino acid composition. We used amino acid composition for the two sets of proteins and for the unknown ones we compared with the known ones and then we decide depending upon the deviation. We can also do with the correlation right also we can use different properties. So, also we discussed about the amino acid properties right for a average property for any given sequence right each amino acid have the unique values. So, we add up together normalized with the chain length that will give the average amino acid property values. So, now what is hydrophobicity profile right because name itself tells it is the plot of the hydrophobicity indices versus amino acid sequence. For example, if you take any protein sequence so you can, you can make a 2D plot. So, x axis we give about the amino acid sequence y axis you write the hydrophobicity. Each amino acid has a value depending upon the hydrophobic character of the residues. So, depending upon the amino acid sequence the residues in the sequence. So, we can make a plot for each values. When you connect then we will get a plot. So, we will see how to construct a plot with an example. We have the sequence right for example, this is the amino acid sequence in which format? First of format because you can see the started with the greater than symbol ok here, here, here you have the amino acid sequence. So, I made some numbers for the 20 amino acid residues based upon their hydrophobic behavior. For example, if you take the highly hydrophobic residues like isoleucine, valine, leucine, phenylalanine, I put value of 2 and less hydrophobic I put value of 1 and the polar residues I give minus 1 and the charge residues I give value of minus 2. So, now we take the amino acid residues versus this hydrophobic indices. So, what is hydrophobicity, hydrophobicity profile? It is a plot connecting sequence. sequence versus the values, right. So, here what is the sequence? M, M e, e, N, L, 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 N, M, D, and so on, right. So, here we can put the hydrophobicity value. So, first one is M. What is the value for M? Uh, one. one. So, we can, uh, can put here. Uh, this is 0. So, here you can put 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. So, m equal to 1. So, you plot here. 
Then the second one is e. What e is? What is the value of e? Minus two. Minus two here. And the n? Minus one. Minus one. L two. plus two. This n minus one. M plus one. D minus two. And so on. Then we connect. Right, we connected. So when you construct a plot, we can see some sort of patterns. These hydrophobicity profiles will provide you a specific patterns, which will be helpful to identify some secondary structures, or you can see any specific motifs, or you can see any segments, right, which are traversing the membrane and so on. So there are various software available to make a plot right so one of, one of these uh, is uh, the available in the literature that is called a 3d insight this will consider various properties it will take the hydrophobicity values along with other properties to make a graph right x axis is the amino acid index and y axis is the hydrophobicity profile or any different properties in this slide when i made this profile i used a value of 1 2 minus 2 and minus 1 actually all the 20 amino acid residues contain specific values right so i give couple of examples one is the nozagi tanford jones scale this is the first scale derived for the 20 different amino acids using experimentally directly we cannot calculate the hydrophobicity values so they did in direct way that's relative solubility of each amino acid residues in water as well as in ethanol so they did the relative solubility right and converted the solubilities into hydrophobicity so, if you look into this 20 different amino acid residues, right, we can see a specific residues which are high values and some of them they have less values. So, if you see this one, can you name few residues which are highly hydrophobic? Tryptophan, right, isolation, right, phenylalanine, right. So, this lesion, so this residues are hydrophobic because it contains aliphatic groups or aromatic groups, so they are hydrophobic. So, in the partition coefficient, even the relative solubility, they also showed that these residues are highly hydrophobic. On the other hand, if you look into the charge residues or polar residues, for example, if you have a serine or you have aspartic acid, right, or you have the glutamic acid, you, you can see that the values are less compared to the hydrophobic residues. So, if you make an average value, so you can easily discriminate the hydrophobic and hydrophilic residues with these numbers right this is one example which we obtain experimentally likewise there are several scales available right i show another example this we obtain from computational analysis what we did here here they constructed a different data set of proteins and they assigned the values for each residue which are influenced with the neighboring residues for each residue they identified the residues which are occurring within the limit of any specific radius and then see what are the residues which are within this limit. Then they assign the experimental value and then finally they derive this final scales. And I will explain uh, about this the development of this scale in later classes. Fine. So, if you see in this scale, here also you can see the real situation right. As we dis uh, discussed earlier, so they have some of the hydrophobic residues like, see like cysteine, tryptophan, isolation, they are highly hydrophobic and so are the polar residues and the charge residues like the lysine and you can see the case of uh, aspartic acid or glutamic acid and these residues they are polar in nature. And major difference we find from these two scales that is mainly in proline, proline they did the relative solubility, proline has a ring. So, you can see this is hydrophobic in this case, but if you look into the location of this proline it is mainly surrounded with polar residues this is the reason why the proline is polar in this scale right many scales they assign proline as a polar residue. So, we can see some differences and uh, similarities and most of the scales currently we have more than 100 indices are available. So, they have qualitatively they have similar behavior. So, now I show one example where we can construct the plot. So, here it lists up several uh, uh, properties and here we have several hydrophobicity values for example, the hydrophobicity values given with Eisenberg also the Kyle Udall scale they developed in 1982 then this is the hydrophobicity scale. So, we have different scales if you want to make a plot right we first take the PDB code or amino acid sequence right this is the PDB code and here we take the L chain. So, if we selected this 
Kratovowski scale and if you click right then you will get the plot. What is the x axis? Change. Amino acid sequence right what is the y axis? Kratovowski value right. So, you can see the plot connecting the sequence and the plot. Some cases you can infer the information some cases it is not. If you see the here it is kind of clusters so you can see the zigzag positions up and down on this case. So, if you cannot infer anything from the single density plot right most of the cases you can find some patterns then you can also try to get some window average. In this case it is possible to get the average. So, for example, if you click on the plot with smoothing with the box in this case you can smooth for any window length. For example, if you have an amino acid sequence like this. So, if you take the single residue plot, they plot for each residues, for each residue they have the heterophobicity values they plot. If you have a window length, for example, any residue if you take a window length of 5 residues, right? for example, window length 5. So, what they do? So, they make a window considering 5, five residues, 2 from left, left side, 2 from right side right by the NNTC C sites, but this is central one. So, they make a window of 5. So, what they do? They calculate the average value and plot for the central one. Right? For the first residue, we do not have the left side residues, right? first two, if you have the window length of 5 and all other residues, they have 5 residues length. So, now if you do this, for example, if you take the smoothing box of 9, then we will get the plot like this. Now, can you see the difference between the previous plot and this plot? Yes, here you can easily identify some regions which are highly hydrophobic nature and some regions which are less hydrophobic nature. For example, if you see here all the residues are highly hydrophobic and you can see somewhere here right some place here, some place here and some place here right. Here you can see this completely polar charged residues or polar residues. So, when you have this one this will tell you that there is a stretch of residues which are highly hydrophobic in nature with one or two polar residues in between. Because of that one or two residues in the first plot you can see a zigzag because that is polar residues has less hydrophobic is down. Here because the average there is compensation may be somewhere here right the residues are high hydrophobic. And interestingly if you see this protein this is a membrane protein right as I discussed earlier the proteins which are embedded in the membranes right. So, these residues they span in the membrane if there is a membrane. So, here this is the protein right. So, the region is the membrane. So, this response resembles this one. So, you can, if you can make a plot this plot has some applications to identify the regions which are inserted into the membrane right. So, if you can use this hydrophobicity profiles right to get several other information. So, this is another behavior which are related with hydrophobicity that is called amphiphatic character. What is the meaning of amphiphatic? Both right 2 ambi means 2 right. So, higher this is high or low. So, this will give you the information regarding the periodicities of the polar and non polar characteristics of sequence. How to get that? You have the numerical hydrophobicity values, you assign the values and then see are there any periodicity in one dimensional plot. How to do this? For example, if you take alpha helical segment right, how many residues per turn? 3.6 residues per turn. So, for if you have a helix, right, we start from here, right. So, one turn is up to here, right, right, this way and this way, right. So, if you have the helical axis, you can put the residues, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, the same way 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you can make it. So, in this case you can see there are two residues on one side and two residues on the other side. So, they show a periodicity of these residues right at different positions. If this i, this i, this i plus 1, i plus 2, i plus 3, i plus 4. So, you can see the periodicity right i plus 5. So, between this i and i plus 4. So, this 1, 2, 3, 4 and this 5 right 1 and 5 they will be in the same phase and likewise you can see the 2 and 6. So, if you have a helical segment you can make on 4 adjacent edges 
right you can put 1 2 3 4 in the direction of the helical axis. Then you can calculate the average hydrophobicity of each edge. For example, if you take this, this plus same is here, same is here. So, you can see i plus j with the interval of 4 and see how many residues in that particular place. For, for example, if you see this periodicity, this is i, this i plus 1, i plus 2, i plus 3, i plus 4 and i plus 5. You can see the periodicity, two residues are less hydrophobic here and two residues are at high hydrophobicity, then again two less and two high. So, if you have this type of patterns, then we can say these residues are part of alpha helix or these residues constitute alpha helix. Right? So, if we have a sequence and if you make a plot with the hydrophobicity and if you see any of these patterns, then we can say that okay, these residues can form alpha helix. Then the second thing is how to calculate the power of ambivathicity. For example, if you have two helices, they are ambivathic and which one is more ambivathic than the other. For in this case, right, you can calculate the power of ambivathicity alpha. So, if 1 and 2 are at high and 3 and 4 are less, then take the first two and the second, third and fourth and get the absolute difference. In this case, Okay, here take these numbers as 1 and these numbers as 2, right. Okay, this is psi plus 6 and this is psi plus 7. So, then take the difference, this will give you the power of ambivalency. Okay, you can see the A alpha either A plus 1 minus A3 plus A4 or if A1 A4 minus A2 plus A3, this is in this case, right. For example, if it is like this. Right. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, right, A1, A2, A3, A4. If this is the case, this will come together, right, A2 plus A3, and this will come together, right, you can see a difference. So, from this one, you can see whether the amphibathic or not. But if you look into the literature, about 70, 70 to 75 percent of the helical segments of known structures, they are amphibathic in nature. In this case, if you use this type of profiles, we are able to predict to some level of accuracy at least to 765 to 70 percent of accuracy right in any sequence. This for alpha helix. How about in the case of beta sheets? Yeah, in the case of beta, beta strands right. So, you can see there is two faces right you have two faces one is here one is here right alternate faces. So, one is having high another case is low hydrophobicity. So, in this case you can calculate beta i this is uh, summation h i plus j by n where here this intervals of 2. In the helix we have interval of 4, in the beta sheet interval of 2 right with up to m where m is the number of residues in each strand. So, calculate the beta i this is equal to sigma h i plus j divided by n right for n is the number of residues in each phase either here or here. So, now we have the patterns okay, you can see the x axis the amino acid sequence y axis the hydrophobic index. So, here these are the hydrophobic values of different amino acids. So, this is the average value. So, this A1, A2, right, A3, A4, right, A5, A6. Okay. So, if you see that the power of the ambivalency you can calculate, maybe this is one side, this is the another side, this is one phase, second phase. Then add up all these three together, take the average and add here everything together and take the average. Finally, you can get the values, right, you can get beta 1 minus beta 2. So, you get the ambivalency behavior of this particular beta sheet. So, in the section analysis also showed that about 65 percent of the beta sheets they possess ambivalency in nature. Right? If you take the all the beta sheets in the known structures and we construct the plots and you can see about 65 percent right, they are in ambivalency in nature. So, now what are the other applications of this hydrophobicity profiles? Right? Here we discuss two cases, right? one is the alpha helices, what is the periodicity in alpha helix? Yeah, 2 on one side and 2 on other side. What is the periodicity in beta sheets? 1 1, right? We have the alternate uh, high and low hydrophobicity patterns. So, some cases, for example, if you get the hydrophobic behavior, right, this is the average value. For example, this is the average value if you take, and all, all the residues are highly hydrophobic. For example, you put this sequence A is hydrophobic, I is hydrophobic, L is hydrophobic. So, all the streets are hydrophobic. So, we have the, the pattern of highly hydrophobic residues. If this is the case, this will resemble a type of 
protein a type of segment which type of segment this membrane spanning alpha helices right so this is the membrane spanning alpha helices so if you plot make a plot you can get some information right from primary sequence right so without having any information if this character provides a specific information at least we can develop from that point of view so constructing heterobiotic profiles will give some information from the sequence this is another pattern just i discussed earlier this is the beta sheets right amphibathy character so because you can see the red one is the heterophobic and the black one is the heterophilic so you can see alternating heterophobicity so this will give the pattern for the beta strands so now in the amino acid sequence it is also possible to identify any specific motifs or patterns in this case we define a specific definition for defining patterns for example we take any sequence then for example five residue segments or 10 residue segments whether they possess any specific patterns so in some cases we discussed earlier about conservation so what is conservation residue yeah in any position a particular residue occupies the same position in all the homologous sequences in this case the residue is said to be conserved right if a residue is said to be conserved then we have to keep that particular residue in all the positions for example if you have specific motif g x x g motif or any specific motif called d r y motif Right, this is for something for the GPCR. This is for for the disulfide uh, bridge forming enzymes. So, if they have some specific motifs, then we can search any specific motifs in the whole database and see whether there is any characteristic pattern for that particular set of proteins. So, in this case, we define patterns right using some sort of notations. So, here we show on sequence. We use some residue names. for example here this means the residue glycine is conserved particular position right that maintains the same residue at the particular position so we cannot change this for this place as well as at this place they put x what is the meaning of x any residues right we can all the 20 amino acid residues right any residue right it's allowed at this particular position then we have these numbers number means number of times we two means two times we can have follow the same notation then we use the square bracket for example here we put livm this will to give you the choice of amino acids any of these four residues among these four either l or i or b or m any residue can accommodate at position number 1 then we have this curly brackets if this is brackets this is excluded that this is not allowed for example if you put cf c and f should not be in that particular position right that is this they give the exception that these are not allowed then you put x for any amino acid n means number of times if you i show this one how many amino acids in this pattern this is 1 2 here 2 right 2 plus 2 4 5 6 7 8 10 14 16 17 right 17 amino acids in this pattern so how to write your pattern in this case right if you take this one so position number 1 which residue can come position number 1 anything is it for example i put b for the second position again we put b right and uh, third and fourth anything anything right you can put up two times b again right and this position G because here we cannot do anything, so we have to use G because G is conserved. And in this, this here, and, and Q. N Q. Okay, we can put Q. So this X, right? X we can put P, right? So here, A. A. Okay. Then two other, two only residues. I come I I A, right? And here, L, L M, M F, F B. B. So because L is allowed, M is allowed, and F is allowed, and V is allowed. Four times because of four times you put four. Then two X, right? A A and finally G. So you can write your pattern, and then you can use this pattern to see whether you can see this type of patterns 
in all the sequences of particular type right i will explain one uh, one with one example so now this you can write a code to get the pattern or also this tool is available in the pair what is pair pattern information resource as they first initially developed for the pattern sequences right and then they developed some tools for analyzing sequences and here if you go to search analysis there is a tool called this pattern match so if you go with this pattern match so you can give the pattern right i give the same pattern here right L L I V M same and if you submit and you will get the sequences right which contain the particular pattern so if you click on this any of this sequence if you click so you'll get this uh, the full sequence and you can see the pattern this sequence where is this in start from here right right v k g right from here to here so if you check this is l l is here and i is here and two res two residues here and then g okay this is a concept g it is here and e is here and then k right and then a and then e and t right and l y uh, l is here y is here and i right then 2x right v and k and final g is final g that is when this works right the program works so you can get this type of patterns and then see whether any specific pattern is important right for a particular set of proteins i explained one example so this is a specific motif for the beta signal that means for the insertion and assembly of beta barrel membrane proteins this is a type of membrane proteins i discussed earlier right so this type of motif is essential right experimentally they uh, observed computationally we can do this analysis using this search so here po means polar so any polar residues and and here there is only x so you here put x here so dot and g so g, g is conserved and any hydrophobic residues this is hy and any x and hydrophobic here and x and hydrophobic okay there's a difference between this small hy and capital hy small hy includes the small residues alanine and cysteine but capital hy it does not include this anc now the question is why oh, experimentally they showed that this specific motif right that is important that is true or not how to verify if it is present in no right, present in present in the first is so first we take all proteins of beta barrel membrane proteins and easily you can write a pattern because if you if you go here and if you write this pattern right then you will get the list of proteins or other way you can do it first download all the beta barrel membrane proteins right and then see whether this pattern is available or not there are two options one is the whole sequence you can search or you can see whether this is important at the n terminal or the c terminal right mainly c terminal for the insertion you can see take this c terminal 40 residues and see whether the pattern is available or not fine so if you find this pattern then you are happy then next question is how to verify this is important for this particular type of proteins you have to compare so this should be present in this type of proteins and but should not be present in other type of proteins so we can construct different data sets where shall we get the sequences unibro database right so then we get the different sequences like normal globular proteins you can see the inner membrane proteins right all beta proteins right different type of proteins you can construct and see whether the pattern is available or not if available there is not specific if it is not available then it is very specific right when you do this we can find this particular motif only for the beta barrel proteins that means this signal is important for the insertion assembly right then we can find something likewise you can define several motifs and you can see some novel patterns and and you can explain why this is important and what is the main use of this particular motifs in any sequences right you can do lot of analysis with different types of proteins mm -hmm.